Hi, I'm Janet Engel, the 5 Minute Read Maker. If you are watching this on YouTube, will you go ahead and click subscribe, please? Um, today we are looking at a read repair shop uh, situation with Kim's Reads. Um, they're really nice. They're finished so um, tidily. They are absolutely functional. They play all the way up and down the oboe, but they're wild. They're, the sound is a little uncontrollable. The upper register is a little uh, edgy and Kim doesn't like the reads. Uh, I am aware that she is at a much higher altitude than I am. So with a grain of salt in my mind, um, I did look at those reads uh, and try not to change them too dramatically, but ooh, we found exactly the thing that needed to be fixed. Hi Kim, thank you for sending these three reads. I think they are like really beautifully made and so consistent. Um, so it it's it seems very clear that the uh, the issues and the concerns and the successes are very much the same between the three of them. So congratulations to you on how beautifully consistent these are. It makes it easy to diagnose what's going on, or at least I hope it does. Um, you said in your note that all three of these reads respond well enough, but just sound really wild. It takes a lot of work for me to be able to rein them in enough to where they don't sound awful. And yeah, I completely get that. I see that in these reads and I'm eager to work on it. I'm going to give you a caveat first, which is that I feel like altitude is one of the biggest environmental factors that uh, that has an impact on reeds. That is, if you were from a more humid climate than me, I wouldn't worry about it too much. If you were from a drier climate, I wouldn't worry about it too much. But you're in fact like a mile higher than me. So it is entirely possible that if I work on these reeds and get them to, if I'm able to get them to where they feel great to me, uh, right here where I am in Indiana, they might end up being a little bit pip squeaky when they come back to you. Because it's hard for me to predict exactly what altitude is doing to these reeds, and it is possible that some of what you've done here um, is what you've had to do for where you are in the world. And, but but I think that what I've seen in these reads is a universal principle that will help you moving forward. So I hope that that is correct. Um, all three of these reads are just under 70. You've got your measurements in basically the same places that I, uh, that I promote, right, with your rooftop around, look, I'm just picking up this one, we're going to start with this one. Um, your rooftop is around 64, there's windows behind the heart, I measured the heart, it's like right around 50, just like mine is. Everything looks great, but um, as you've described, the crow is a little bit wild and disorganized, even though it speaks very easily. And it's almost difficult, actually, to get a beep right at the tip, um, which is something that I do look for. I want, it, I want it to be relatively easy to vibrate the tip without anything else. And it feels as though the whole reed wants to vibrate right away. Um, and for a reed that has a heart that's, you know, nice and healthy, um, it feels almost surprising that it is so responsive. My bigger concern... Um, and this was predictable to me from the uh, the disorganized crow, is that it really just seems like your tip is uniformly thin all the way across. And um, what I would want want to do to tame the wildness that you're hearing and to uh, better separate the tip from the heart so that the beep is a little bit more more easy, so that the response is a little bit more um, predictable, I guess, um, is I really want the sides and the corners of the tip to be more thinner than the middle of the tip than they are. So that is what I'm going to try to do. Before I scrape on this, let me just play it on the oboe real quick. It 
plays really easily. It plays all up and down the oboe. It gives me no difficulty in the low register, the high register, the response is great. But you're right, it feels wild and crazy. Like if I let go with my mouth, it's gonna do something just bonkers. So, um, and I think that is almost entirely coming from your uniformly thin tip. So what I'm gonna do is try ever so gently to cut in just a little bit more at the right gutter and just scrape the very edge. And I mean, I have to be very, very delicate because the tip is already very, very thin all the way across. And it is entirely possible that in doing this work, I'm gonna rip off a side and I'm gonna be sad if I do that. But, but, um, having more slope within the tip, I think is your answer to taming this wildness that you feel. It's interesting, actually, on both blades uh, of this reed, I feel uh, a greater weight and a greater uh, ambiguity about the rooftop um, than on the left, um, which makes sense because you're a lefty. So there is nice and clear. And this is a little bit more ambiguous. Um, I think this is the side I just did. And this is the side I'm about to do. I can see your cut in so cleanly there. And over here, there's like, there's your rooftop, but there's also like another bulge of stuff. So I hope you can see that. I'm trying to bring it in for focus. And I'm just gonna try to cut in a little bit more cleanly right at that gutter and take away that kind of bulge there. And you can see that I'm doing hardly anything. Ooh, I hope this works. And do you hear immediately there's It's, this is still not um, the crow of my dreams, but I have, um, but it, it's better organized. I hear the octaves instead of the like clutter. I think we can do more, but let me play this on the oboe. I want to clip it because it feels too easy, but at the same time, I don't want to clip it because it's very short already. So I'm just going to go in again and do a little bit more of the same. I want to do a little bit more organizing of that crow before I I clip. Um, the very, very easy response in this read, to me, is a little bit of a liability and yet you've made it so very consistent between your three reads that I hesitate to mess with that. Um, what I'm doing right now is just trying to pull the rooftop back the tiniest bit to give me just the littlest bit more uh, Mm, to give me the littlest bit more structure, basically by pulling the roof, the, the edges of the roof back, by steepening the roof a little bit, I'm trying to give the impression in this read that there's more bulk in the center. Because this slope outward toward the tip is, outward toward the sides of the tip, is the thing I feel so strongly that you are lacking and the thing that I think will improve this read for you. Okay. Now, although it still feels very easy, do you feel hear how beautifully organized that crow is now? It's absolutely two pure octaves. Uh, when I play it on the oboe, it's gonna feel too easy. So now we've got a clip, got a clip. We've raised the crow. But I feel 
almost as though like no matter how much I let go now, I've got stability inside this reed. <laughs> And I think you're going to like that a lot more. So all I did, I haven't touched literally anything on this reed behind the rooftop. I've reset your rooftop just a little bit. I've thinned the sides and you you will have noticed that I took off some of the, uh, the edge there. I'm not proud of that. Like I don't want that to be the case. And in your future reed making, I would say if possible, um, do less in the middle of the tip so that you can do less at the sides and still have slope. Uh, but that feels like a winner. This is your read number 14. Here's read number eight. And I anticipate the same task, but let's just look at it. Again, there's sort of a wild and disorganized crow. The read, um, I actually think this one might be a little overwound which is a of slight concern. I see a lot of, no, that's consistent. I see a lot of width at your throat dimension here, um, which is probably a modification you've put in place for where you live, for the altitude that you live at. So I'm not gonna address that. But if that feels bad to you, or if you feel like there's not enough control of the reed, just down at this area, um, winding a little bit longer would take care of that. Um, but you'll observe that I see this sort of same thing in the tip. We've got a rooftop angle here on the left, and it's much shallower here on the right. Uh, this side is not quite as visible a, a, a difference. Um, but when you when I put the plaque in, you will see, I think. Oh, ooh. I will see a crack. Did I do that? I see that there's a crack down by the uh, thread here. It looks like it's the same grain that is problematic here. Um, don't panic. Let me see if I feel that crack when I play this read. game here just for a minute because I think I can take the wildness out of this read by doing the same things that I did before. Thinning the sides of the tip, resetting the rooftop to be a little bit steeper, and not touching anything else. Let's see if I can do it without uh, exacerbating that crack. It's possible that I can't. So there's my rooftop that I'm recutting. There's my side, my rightmost three grains. Here's the left side. Just cutting it at the gutter a little more. and pet and the kitty up to the corner. Same over here. <laughs> okay. It looks like I've taken buckets of cane here, but uh, I think I have not. I think I've really tried to focus it at the sides and the corners. And do you hear how immediately that crow, which was wild and crazy, like this one, has organized itself down into, uh, into octaves. That is the magic of making sure that the sides of the tip are the thinnest part. 
Um, and again, I steepened the rooftop mostly to strengthen the middle of the reed. That's my That was my whole goal in doing that. It's not that I wanted your rooftop to be lower, it's that I wanted your center to be heavier. I think I can go farther, actually. Crack? What crack? Um, and I say that because as I play this read, I can feel uh, some extra density up at the tip of the tip, just sort of in my lips. And so I just want to go over the same thing again, the exact same side of the tip. And this time as I get up toward the top, um, I don't want to scrape in the middle of the tip at all. That's where you, that's where your problems came from. But I am going to very lightly sort of go across the tip of the tip up here, if you see how lightly I'm doing that. And here we go again. On this side, it's just all about that very edge. And we've talked about this, I know. Um, I do almost all of this controlling of where my knife goes. It happens with my index finger, my left index finger, your right, um, the finger behind the reed. And I'm just using that finger to direct the reed at the knife in exactly the area that I want to be scraping. And I'm doing it so lightly, right? I, I sort of don't care. Sorry, I'm looking for focus. Um, I almost don't care if anything comes off on the knife. That's not quite true, right? I want something to come off every time, but um, this is such a delicate uh, and such a, a light touch on this read, but there's the crow. I've just dropped it so I can clip a tiny bit. So much more depth, so much more control, and it all came just from doing the corners and sides of the tip. Um, I'll go ahead and do this one. I think the game is going to be exactly the same, but I want to congratulate you on just how strong and consistent these reeds are, right? Um, you've seen other reed repair shops that I've done where there's like sort of a different issue with every single reed. These are rock solid. You've done the same thing over and over again. You're getting to the same result. And that's a great place to be in because it means that uh, that you can make one tweak to all of these reads you've been doing. You can do it, do uh, the, just add, add one element to what you're already doing and it's going to make a world of difference to you. Um, I didn't play this read yet, did I? Here's that wild and crazy crow. Here's the read which is responsive and playable and it goes all over the oboe but it sounds really harsh. Here again is your very uniformly thin tip that uh, with the rooftop that's a little steeper on the left than on the right. There it is again, exactly the same as before and I'm going to fix it the same way. Um, I'll say again, I hope that when you get these back, they feel okay to you um, at your altitude, which is the, the X factor here that I cannot quite predict. Um, and if it turns out that the corrections that I'm making in these reads are too much for what you need, you can modify it. I have every faith that you can uh, take care of this uh, and find your own way to the right balance of steepness in the rooftop and thinness at the sides of the tip.
that is right for you. It is possible that I am overcorrecting your steepness in taming these reeds down to what works for me. But honestly, I don't know how else to how else to talk about these. But, ooh, I'm not quite happy with that yet. Wouldn't it be funny if after all of that conversation about consistency, this one was the one that was different, that required something different of me? Ha 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 ha. But so far I'm doing exactly the same things. Rooftop. Thinness at the sides and corners. And I've lost the crow altogether in this read. How baffling. What? I've lost everything on this read. What's happening? Don't, sorry, coming out of frame. I don't see anything that should have caused this to completely go away and die. I've got a chirp. What have I done? Okay, calm down. Everybody calm down. We are at 69 millimeters. Rooftop is about 64, 63 and a half. Your wind is conceivably just a hair over, but it looks real accurate, so I'm gonna go with it. Same over here, nothing is crazy. I do see that maybe I've cut in a little bit hard right there. Could that be causing a chirp? It looks as though I'm going to go there and see if I can find that, but let's, yep. And it also feels as though like my vibration is only in the tip now. I wonder if your uh, heart is heavier in this read than in the others. And I'm just going to check. You're at 50, 52, 51, 49 here in this heart. And this other side of the heart is much shorter and at 50. Okay. Maybe. So I'm, I'm just looking at the difference in length on your two hearts and noticing that this side, which is a longer heart, is also a heavier heart. So I'm making a hypothesis. And take a look at this, actually. The uh, opening... This is your longer, heavier heart side down at the bottom. Um, feels a little smiley, as though that heart is really holding it open kind of aggressively. All right. So consistent, but this green one's a little different. I'm just going to do the littlest bit, scraping across the heart. Oh, so lightly. And then I'm going to look at this area where I think I took uh, too much from the side. I'm just going to reset that slope a little and then make sure that I get thinner north of that thin place. And then clip. Have you stumped me, Kim? It seems possible. 
Because this reed didn't feel that bad when I started with it. And now it's gotten real weird. I'm gonna go to the heart on this side. Ooh, I just felt a great big load of thickness that I hadn't felt before. Heart over here. Windows a little bit. I'm just sort of doing a really gentle overall scrape so I can get the feel for what's going on. See if my knife can find the problem. All right, look at that. We just took a little bit of wood off all over and I re regained a crow. It's not the best crow. Okay. Well, bafflingly, um, having done that, I did bring the, the reed back around. It plays all over the oboe. I still feel a little bit of wildness right up in the upper register. And so I'm going to look again at the tip and see if there's a, a place where I have not adequately thinned the sides and corners or where the slope is not uh, sloping. And I mean, I can't even blame you on this now because clearly I've remade this entire tip. This side looks good to me. Look at this. I don't like the height of the rooftop here on the left compared to the back blade. There's my rooftop. Sorry, this is my lower blade, which I like. This is my upper blade, which is real clunky. Um left-hand side of the rooftop feels too shallow and the cutting immediately above it is too strong. So I'll just back that up. So what am I doing here? Uh, when things started to go south, when I couldn't find anything in this reed, I just did, sort of did a gentle overall scrape and then I went back in to look for structure and symmetry. And structure and symmetry in the rooftop proved to be lacking. And I know I just did this, but sometimes you can't see what's right in front of your face. There it is. And there is an organized crow. And a reed with some stability. Okay. There we go. Um, I love these reeds. They were built so clearly and cleanly. It was very obvious what the problem was, which was almost, <laughs> except for this guy, almost exclusively uh, issues of slope within the tip um, and uh, structure of the rooftop, um, which it's possible. Sorry, let me zoom out a little bit. It's possible that uh, where you are, having that slightly flatter rooftop is more appropriate. Um, but I would say, can you leave more stuff above the rooftop so that you have more room to slope outward in the tip? Make sure that those leftmost and rightmost grains of the tip are the thinnest part. And that's such a small tweak, actually, on these very good reeds. So I think you are in great shape. This has been a reed repair shop session. If you would like uh, to have my eyes and my knife and my attention on your reads in this way, you can find information about the reed repair shops over at my website, JanetIngle.com. Uh, I could also help you in Reed Club, which is a weekly meeting of people who want to make reads and get better at doing so. Um, it's social read making at its finest, and you could find information about that also on my website, JanetIngle.com, which is, of course, also where you could order reads or cane or reach out to me with a question that I might be able to answer on a future five minute read maker video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.